Hi, I'm Charlotte Nichols from Harvey and Hugo, and today I'm chatting to David Harper. Um, I've forgotten what to introduce you as. Just David Harper. <laughs> David, the well, David Harper. He does stuff on TV. And can I just say you did that so well? Oh, thank you. I, I've been trained. You have been trained. <laughs> What, what, who, who trained you? Um, someone else. <laughs> just now, you, in these uh, few tips. We saved the introductions till the end, so thank you. Just in that, however long we've been chatting, 20 minutes. 20 minutes, you're I a transformed have, um, presenter. Yes, transformed. You're brilliant. But I, and, and I'm even being self-deprecating, is that the right word? It's and, absolutely yeah. brilliant, yeah. yeah. And you're happy to make mistakes. Yes. That's mm -hmm. fine, because you're just normal, you're a normal person. Yeah. This is what people often get confused about with people in TV and superstars. And when I say to them, well, they're just normal people, they're slightly disappointed. Which is one <laughs> of the reasons why they say you should never meet your heroes from television and movie. Because the reason for that is that they're just normal people doing a job in front of a camera, that's all. But they're normal. So yeah, be normal. You were normal. You were Charlotte. But you're far from normal, Charlotte. Thank you. I think that's a compliment. Not abnormal. <laughs> I am, to be honest. <laughs> um, I embraced it all. Well, can, can I just say abnormal is great? Yeah. Well, we, all, we all have little abnormalities mm -hmm. and they should be celebrated. I Don't agree. hide them. And it could be a twitch. It could be a lopsided face. It could be a stammer. It could be a limp. I don't care what it is. It's wonderful and it makes that person unique. I agree. So abnormalities, we celebrate them. Absolutely. So David, who actually are you then? Because I can't, couldn't remember. Like, what, what do you do? Just <laughs> well, do you know what? I, I, I do so many things these days. And the reason why I do so many things is because by nature I get very bored very quickly. So I jump around. So what I do I'm very fortunate because I do television work for the BBC and other broadcasters. I've got my YouTube channel where I make what I want, say what I want, which I love the freedom of that. I in bet. Right. I, it's wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful. I really push the boundaries a little bit there. Brilliant. Uh, I write books. I do theatre shows. I do public speaking. And of course, I train people how to public speak, how to appear on camera and present down the lens for their own corporate videos. And I must say, quite a new venture for me, even though I've been doing it for 20 odd years. I, I thoroughly enjoy this because I'm meeting people in the prime of their work life. They're really energized. They really want to get places with their career. You know, they're not knocking on the door of retirement. They're really full of energy and that feeds my soul. People have, have that ability to do that. They really feed you and lift you. So if I can help people deliver messages to camera, it gives me a real thrill. So I suppose we should talk about how this collaboration came about. I and suppose we should, shouldn't we? Do you remember when we first met? Gosh, well, shall I be honest? It's going to be no, isn't it? <laughs> no, I, do, I think I probably do remember, mm. but you won't. No, I do, I do. No, you won't, because I think I saw you oh. when you were a little girl, because oh, really? I know your mum and dad, of course. Ah, oh, yes, yes. Who had the, the paint and decorating store. Ah, uh, yes. I'm sure that you appeared in the store, but you won't remember. No, no, I, I can't say I do There you remember. go, I'll shock you. Oh, yeah. I'm shocked you, haven't wow. I? Wow, okay. yeah. So, uh, but I do remember when you and I first met in the real world, mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was at a business sort of get together. Yes. Was it in Durham or Newcastle? It was in Newcastle. I yes. believe it was at Jesmond Dean House. It was, I remember. Yes, that yes. lovely venue for the Many years ago. Forum mm -hmm. end of year meal or was whatever it was. Dinner, I think. Is property. that what it was? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember, it's probably a bit embarrassing, but I remember recognising you, but I couldn't quite place. And then ah. as we were talking, then I was like, ah, yes. Oh, yes. You must That's get that a lot, do you? I do. I do. People often go, hello, how's the family? Yeah. Great, thank you. And how's what? Yeah, fine. Are you still living in so-and-so? No, I think you've got me confused. What? And, oh. and so I get that kind of ah, thing a lot. So right. people assume they know me, mm -hmm. but not quite sure where from. Yes. Yeah, and, and I just remember we had a lovely chat. and We, we just, did. From my yeah. point of view, we seemed to hit it off. I thought we did. And then we got together sometime later to mm -hmm. discuss ideas, didn't yes. we? Yes, and then you got us on one of your TV shows. Was it Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Oh, yes. Is? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you were a victim. I was a victim. I'm always, well, on that show, we don't make it anymore, sadly. Uh, Put okay. Your Money Where Your Mouth Is. Mm -hmm. It was great. We travelled all over the country and Europe buying antiques and I was always looking for victims to sell to and I thought Charlotte you're a perfect victim oh, I'm I gonna was... flog you something on the on the program absolutely I still got it it's still it's in my dining room which doubles up as an office as well <laughs> it's that 
calendar, that ancient calendar where I can't even remember its purpose, but it, it's, it's, it's literally, ask Chris, it's still there. It's just a thing. It's yes. a thing mm -hmm. of beauty. Yeah, it is quite yes. beautiful and it has yeah. a purpose. I can't remember the purpose, but Who that's cares? not the point. Um, and also, obviously, we're on TV and still yeah. to this day, every maybe year or so, someone will message me. Say, yeah. I've just seen you on television. Yeah. And I was like, goodness, that was years ago. Do you know what the power of television is absolutely outrageous? Yeah. I get messages from all over the world. Taiwan, I'm big in Taiwan, did you know that? I did. Did I, I remember, mention that? I remember on the podcast. I'm so pleased mm -hmm. about yeah. that. I just can't stop talking about it. Definitely. When a Taiwanese guy said to me, you are big in Taiwan, that is, that, I just thought I've made it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're big at Business Central too, so you, <laughs> you definitely made it. <laughs> um, so yes, then we met to do that. Yeah. And then I think there was a while where we didn't really speak. It was a very yeah. sad time. Yeah. Um, but then, <laughs> Yeah, we got together more recently because mm. you were telling me about a new venture that you were starting to do, yeah. which was confidence training. Yeah. And I actually thought, well, actually, that could be really useful for a lot of our clients, a lot of people we work with. Of course. So tell me yeah. more about that. Well, you know, confidence is everything. And you don't necessarily have to be born with confidence. It's something that you can practice and it's something that you can pretend. And this sounds terrible, pretending, but it's not if it works because confidence gets you through doors. It opens doors and it gets you in places you would ordinarily never get unless you had that confidence. And it could be just a mask. In my mind, I have this idea of sometimes when you need to be very, very confident, you kind of pick up a mask and you put it on and you play the role of yourself, but you play the role of that confident self. And very often, Charlotte, what happens is if you play that role long and hard enough, it becomes part of your character and personality. A confident person. Not a cocky person, just somebody who is confident in their own skin. Mm -hmm. And that if you walk into a room and you can see it, you can feel it when somebody comes in with confidence and not with confidence. And it's the person with confidence, as much as many people want to fight it, they're the people that get places. And so there, is, there are tricks, there are ways, there are methods that I've developed over very many years and I've copied from people I've met in media, in television, in film, rock stars, pop stars, TV presenters, well-known public figures from politicians to clergymen. Mm. And I've interviewed them and I've asked them how they use their confidence or lack of and how they develop it. And so I, over say 20 years of working in the media, have developed a system to show, to train anybody how to improve their confidence or become confident. And that I guarantee will get them places. Amazing, and I totally believe that. And, but there seems to be a massive lack of confidence. Totally. Why do you think that is? It's not trained, it's not mm -hmm. taught. You, know, you don't go to school or college and they don't train you how to be confident. They can train you how to speak. They can train you how to sing. They can train you how to draw. They need to train you how to be confident because confidence, I can tell you, gets you places. You don't need to be highly educated. You don't need to be particularly intelligent, but confidence gets you places. Oh, I and so it's vital. It's vital. Mm. And to me, it's bonkers beyond comprehension that nobody, well, there are people that train confidence, but it isn't a, a, just a, a national rollout. Let's make everybody just a little more confident. Mm. It's bonkers mm. because it's not rocket science. If it was rocket science, I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I, I think that you're so right. It's so needed. And we yeah. notice it a lot as well in the services that we offer because video, podcasting, yeah. all these multimedia services, they're becoming so valuable in terms of PR. With the rise of AI, you know, people want to see that people are genuine. They're not speaking to a robot. And I know AI is getting close to yeah. copying videos yeah. and spoken word, but I'd like to think we can see through it. I, I, I think we can see through it. Mm -hmm. And you watch YouTube videos now, and it takes a nanosecond to determine whether that's a real person, a real voice, or an AI version. And I just don't buy into AI. It makes me sound very old-fashioned. I, I understand that it's a great tool, but if I'm listening to a tutorial of some sort and I know it's just typed out and then delivered by AI, it just doesn't feel real. But if I can look into the eyes of a real person and send, look into their soul, if you like, yeah. you know, get a real sense of them. And even they don't have to be natural 
TV presenters, they don't have to be perfect. In fact, a bit like the world of antiques, imperfection is perfect. Real people. And I think that we can train real people to deliver great real messages for their companies, their organizations that will get them business over and above their competitors who are simply buying AI fakery, mm -hmm. really. We want real human beings. We're going to lose it if we don't. It's like cash. If we don't cling on to cash, mm -hmm. you know, cash is important. Real humans are important, that interaction with. Absolutely, yeah. And that's often a stumbling block for us. You know, people recognize the need for this content, but they're just like, oh goodness, like, I'm, I'm not going to go in front of a camera. No way. And no one else is. No. And sometimes poor Ryan turns up at a photo shoot <laughs> or a, a video shoot and literally everyone's like run away, hiding yes. from him. Yes. And really, it's simple. You know, they, they know their jobs, they know yeah. what to do, they just need to talk about it. That's it. Know your stuff, right? That's a given. If you don't know your stuff, you're going to really struggle delivering something to camera. But if you know what you're talking about, you will be fine. Talking to an inanimate object is not difficult. It really isn't. There are loads of tricks looking down the lens of that camera. I'm not looking down the lens of that camera. I'm doing something completely different, which I could train someone to do. And it's just a mindset. I'm looking down the lens. I'm not looking down the lens. I'm looking at somebody. I'm talking to somebody. You just get yourself into a right headspace and it means nothing. When you see the reflection of yourself in the lens, when you get really close to it, it's fine. You can, you can deal with that. There are loads of tricks and methods. And think about it. You might be getting viewed by three million people, mm. but at that moment, you're just looking down the lens. Come on, how difficult is that? I think you just put the, the nail on the head because hit the nail on the head because it's that thinking about how many people are going to be watching it that then throws people. It's a mindset thing, I think yeah. sometimes. But it's also a bit of a thrill. I can I can mm -hmm. I can train people to get that thrill. Brilliant. It is a real thrill to know that whatever I'm saying now is going to be viewed by three million people time and time and time again, like your show on Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is, has probably been viewed by 100 million people in the last 10 years. 100 million people. Come on. There's a bit of a thrill there somewhere, Charlotte. Yeah, definitely. Isn't I mean, there? The thing is, though, when I'm doing little videos and I'm, it's much smaller scale than what you do, I tell myself to help my confidence. Oh, probably just my mom's going to be watching it. <laughs> so that helps me. So I guess it's whatever helps and well, framing it. it helps you, that's yeah. great, isn't yeah. it? So just my mom will be watching this. But it's funny you say that because when I've done events and I've uh, done talks, I've, I've done theatre shows for years, and I've had some right old stonking disasters where I've turned <laughs> up and one, there was 18 people people in the audience. 18 people in a theatre that should house at least 300. They're all sat at the front. That was more difficult, bizarrely, than dealing with an audience of 300 people. It was just too personal. And there are ways of dealing with that as well. Okay. And so for those that are afraid of talking to 500 people, there are ways of dealing with that. And for those that are afraid of dealing with three people in the room in a job application scenario, there are ways of dealing with Brilliant. that. Brilliant, yeah. There are tricks and methods to get over all of these fears. And really, it really isn't difficult. Wonderful. And we're going to reveal just some of those yeah. tips and tricks. Not maybe a few today for okay. social media, but um, in a seminar that we're going to be yes. on, a webinar. The reason why we're collaborating is because we produce, we kind of do everything from creating ideas for podcasts and videos to writing scripts. And then we, we promote and we record it as well. Yeah. And we promote it at the other side. However, we need someone who can yes. help instill our clients That's right. with that confidence to, so they can produce the best possible performance. They do their company proud. That's right. And that's the area where you come in. And, and, and I must say, it's a great thrill for me. I love it. I love to meet someone who is absolutely petrified at looking down the lens of that. And within a few hours, they're looking down the lens of that and delivering really good little pieces to camera real sharp, snappy things with great confidence, and they're thrilled. Mm. So yeah, no, I, I, this, this could be exceptionally exciting, I think. I know, I think it will be as well. But c can you really see a difference after like one, one of your sessions? Oh, I would say absolutely. Yeah. In, in fact, I would go as far as to say, I will guarantee a difference, Brilliant. a marked, noticeable difference. 
Wonderful. Uh, so, I'm making this sound too easy, aren't I? I know, I know. So if people are interested, so obviously we're putting on this teaser webinar, and then if they are interested in your services, yeah. we would say come through Harvey and Hugo, contact one of the Harvey and Hugo team. We will arrange the session with David for you, and we can take it from there, and you'll be an amazing, confident speaker in no time. Wouldn't that be great? It's going to happen. We could transform the world. Yes, one client at a time. <laughs> <laughs>